Good afternoon, I'm Katora Green, PIO for Savannah Police, and thank you for attending this press conference as we recap the 2019 unsolved homicide cases. Before we move forward, I would like to acknowledge the individuals we have here with us today. We have Mayor Van R. Johnson II, Alderman Curtis Perti, and we also have City Manager Pat Monahan here with us as well. We have Chief of Police Roy Minter, Assistant Chief Lenny Gunther, Captain David Gay of the Criminal Investigations Division, Lieutenant Andre Jackson, who oversees the Homicide Unit, and Homicide Unit Supervisors, Sergeant Robert Santoro and Sergeant Zachary Burdett. We also have Crime Stoppers Director Larry Branson here with us. Thank you all. First, you will hear from Chief of Police, Roy Minter. Thank you, Katura, and good afternoon. 2019, 24 people lost their lives in the city of Savannah to gun violence. That's a 14 percent decrease from 2018 when we had 28 homicides, but it's still tragic that we had 24 people lose their lives in our city. Due to the extraordinary efforts and hard work by our detectives, 17 of these cases have been solved. This afternoon, we're here to discuss and continue to request the public support and developing information to assist with solving these seven remaining unsolved homicides from 2019. At this time, I'll uh, turn the podium over to Sergeant Zachary Burdett, and he'll give you an overview of these unsolved cases. Sergeant. Good afternoon. Uh, as you can see on our board over here, uh, these are the victims of our seven unsolved cases. The first one is Jamar Davis. Uh, he was um, murdered on January the 1st, 2019, uh, when police were called to the 100 block of Tibet Avenue on Savannah Southside. Uh, he had sustained an apparent gunshot wound uh, and was deceased when, invest or when patrol officers got there. Uh, Savannah police homicide investigators took over investigation. Uh, we're still actively following leads in that case and are asking the public's help uh, to help further the investigation. The second one is Tyrese Carter. Uh, he was gunned down on January 2nd, 2019 uh, at 2501 Bull Street. Um, he was there um, at the club uh, and was tragically gunned down outside uh, at around 0024 hours. Uh, the third one is Mr. Kyle Cook. Uh, he was found deceased on January 7th, 2019 uh, at a residence in uh, the south side of Savannah uh, on Chatham Street, uh, suffering from an apparent gunshot wound. Uh, the fourth one is Mr. Marcus Drummer. Uh, patrol officers responded to uh, an apartment complex on the south side of Savannah on February 17th at around 2200 hours uh, where he was found deceased inside of an apartment. Uh, the next one is Mr. Terry Ward. Um, he was uh, found deceased inside of a residence on Thursday, September the 5th, 2019 at approximately 9.42 in the morning. Uh, and that incident happened in the 600 block of West 41st Street. The next one is Leopoldo Corona. Uh, he was found deceased uh, at a residence um, at, on Fairmont Street on Savannah Southside uh, on November 21st. 2019 at approximately 0200 hours and then the last one is Mr. Tory Sterling uh, who was gunned down on December 22nd 2019 at approximately 2:15 a.m. Uh, on West 37th Street near Whitaker Street. Uh, we're here as the homicide unit to just continue to ask the public's help to provide any information that you may have to, to help these families get some justice for their loved ones because uh, our office is working diligently and around the clock to try to solve these cases. Thank you, Sergeant Burdett. We will now hear from Director of Crime Stoppers, Larry Branson, who's going to talk about how the community can get involved with solving these seven unsolved homicides. <clears throat> Thank you, Couture. Good afternoon, everyone. I, I simply want to simplify this process for Crime Stoppers so that there's no confusion. <clears throat> there are 30 reports 
information by anonymous tipsters provided to the Savannah Police Department from January 1, 2019 through today. As late as yesterday afternoon, we submitted a tip to Savannah's Homicide Unit. Every one of these 30 tips have been investigated, are being investigated, will be investigated by the SPD Homicide Unit thoroughly. Uh, Crime Stoppers always pays cash. There's not a check, it's always cash. No questions are ever asked. Information that results in an arrest pays cash. You never have to reveal your identity. You don't have to talk to the police. You don't have to go to court. You don't have to sign anything or ever tell anyone that you provided information that led to an arrest. This is a way to improve our community, to make our community safer. You become a nameless hero. This is tax-free cash provided for that information, and no one has to know. You can simply call 234-2020, and the Crime Stoppers operator will ask you questions. You can tell them everything you know. Your identification, your telephone number is never seen. That information is scrubbed at the server, whether you call on your cell phone, a landline, however you do that, your information is scrubbed at the server and we never see that. You'll be provided a, a code, a five-digit number, and that's how we know you. That's the only identif identifying information we know you by is by that five-digit number. You may also go on to our website or our Facebook site and submit a tip electronically. Likewise, that information is scrubbed at the server. We never know your URL. We never have any identifier for who you are, what computer you're using that information is absolutely confidential. When an arrest is made, the tipster will reach out to Crime Stoppers and inquire, was that my information that led to an arrest? Uh, have we made an arrest in this case? We can tell the tipster that at the time that they call. Once that tip money is approved by our board of directors, and it will be approved, the tipster is forwarded to a bank, one of several banks that we use here in Chatham County. To claim your cash reward, all you have to do is simply walk in, provide that five-digit number. The bank teller will check it against the list which we have provided to that bank. It's confirmed. The teller will walk over to the till, pull out the cash money, hand it to you, and you turn around and walk out. You never have to sign anything. You never have to give any information at all. That's how simple it is. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, our staff will take your calls your online tips, forward them to the appropriate law enforcement agency. This is an opportunity starting right now. If you consider the seven unsolved homicides that we have, make a difference. Clean up our community. Save a life. And let's give justice to these seven people right here and to all of those who have gone before them. Thank you. Thank you, Detect um, Director Branson. You will now hear from Mayor Van R. Johnson, and after Mayor, we will open it up for questions. I am because we are, we are therefore I am. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today as we begin an effort to solve every homicide in our community that has yet to be solved. I'm glad to have Alderman Curtis Pertee with me today, and he is an active law enforcement officer. Last year, we lost too many people in our city. They were young and old, male and female, married and single, of many different colors, religious and not. The one bit of solace that we have to, to be able to offer to them is and to the folks that love them, is to bring justice to those who committed these crimes. Our police department, under the leadership of our chief, Roy Mentor, has been extremely successful in apprehending those in our community who commit these most heinous crimes. When you look at the statistics, 24 homicides, 17 of them cleared. It is amazing police work, Chief 
and to your wonderful detectives and for those who have dedicated their lives uh, to, to the law enforcement service. It's a great job. But unfortunately, there are still families who lost a loved one in 2019 who have not received the figurative closure of achieving justice. Jamar Davis, Tyrese Carter, Kyle Cook, Marcus Drummer, Terry Ward, Leopoldo Corona, and Tori Sterling. These men were in the prime of their lives and at the pain of their families and their friends have endured through their tragic loss is unmeasurable. We're here to remind you today, remind everyone in Savannah, if you commit a crime here, we will find you. We have among the best law enforcement officers in the country. They'll find you. If you committed one of these crimes, it would be far easier for you to turn yourself in than for them to find you. And if you're harboring someone that you know, if you have information about this information about someone who's committed some of these crimes. Again, do the right thing. Turn that information over. You could do it through Crime Stoppers anonymously, but please, let's go ahead and do it. And to the families of those we're here to seek justice for, we want to remind you that Savannah has not forgotten you. We continue to stand by you, and we will not give up on finding justice. If you know anything about these murders, please call Crime Stoppers. You will remain anonymous and you can receive a cash reward for the information you share. As the chief said a couple of days ago, uh, stitches, snitches get riches. And this is an opportunity for you to be financially empowered by the information that you have. We need those with the knowledge to come to the table and share it remembering that these victims can no longer sit down to our tables to share. Those who might be nervous to speak up because of fear of a negative impact for their own safety can rest assured, and I'll say it again, any reports received will remain anonymous. We don't care who you are, and to be honest with you, we don't care why you step forward with the information, but if you help us achieve justice for these murders, we will be grateful for your bravery and for your honesty. These are fathers and these are people who should still be with us. Lives are very, very valuable. And these lives meant something to their families. They meant something to Savannah. Again, I'd like to thank Chief Mentor and the Savannah Police Department, Larry Branson and Crime Stoppers for their partnership and a commitment to making our city more safer and more just. And this will not be the last you see of us in these types of forums. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Johnson. We will now open the floor for questions, so please just direct your question to the appropriate person. policing, investigative work, or public input, or all of the above? I'd say all of the above. Uh, we have some outstanding individuals uh, that are members of the Savannah Police Department, and if you look at what these investigators do on a daily basis, they work tirelessly on these cases. Uh, they don't give up, and they seek justice for each and every one of these individuals. Uh, some of these individuals have gone out and worked some of these scenes, and have worked 20, 21 straight hours before they've been able to go home to their families. And then they come back in the next day and put in additional hours to continue to work on these cases. Uh, these investigators have been working on these cases for quite some time. They are still following up on leads involving these cases, but any additional information that we can get to assist us with closing these cases would be very much appreciated. The chief, <coughs> excuse me, um, for the assault homicide cases, uh, would you say that uh, many of those that were solved were from tips, from tipsters? Well, you know, let me, let me turn that information over to the investigators who actually worked those okay. cases because I'm not sure where they got those leads from. <clears throat> to, to best answer your question, it's a little bit of everything. Uh, it depends on the case. 
some of the cases we got tips on some of them we got community assistance on uh, and some of it is, is just the pure dedication of our investigators going out there and like the chief said working 20 plus hours a day and then coming back the next day and working 20 plus hours until they get the results that we need which is justice for the families so sorry while you're up there um, so of those cases right there those are all people who've been killed and someone has been arrested for murder for each one of them uh, there has and some of them the the case was determined to be justified but in every one of these cases the suspect or the person responsible for the death of someone else was identified and it's been run through the proper channels so for most of them there are are things been exceptionally exceptionally cleared where there is not an arrested person yeah yes there's been a few that have been cleared that way because the da's office has determined that it was a justifiable uh, case. Do you know how many? Uh, not off the top of my head. I'm sure Patricia can get that. Yes, I was going to yeah. say if you have any questions and they can't answer them right now, I can see if I can get you that information after the press conference. Mayor, Mayor Johnson touched on something that I think is important <coughs> for folks to know, and maybe anyone can elaborate is that it's not only the folks who may know something about this, but also the people. Who may be harboring information or the individuals involved can anyone speak to what consequences that person or persons might have i think well a, a couple things so uh, to touch on one of the questions you mentioned or uh, you asked earlier there's a wide range of evidence that's available nowadays to investigators when they're working any kind of crime what we're here to talk about today is that information that's contained within people's minds, right? It's things they've heard, things they've, they've heard other people say, or they've witnessed themselves. Um, in terms of potential consequences, that's going to range a lot. Um, worst case scenario, they could potentially be, face some kind of charges themselves, up to including murder. That would be probably a rare occurrence. Um, all the way to probably something much lighter, something along the lines of lack of obstruction charge. Interesting thing is, Ideally, well, that there are seven murderers out there, people who have killed before, that could have the propensity to do it again. If we're talking about doing something serious about our crime rate in the city, we have to get people who commit murder off our streets, period. And so as long as the individuals that have been engaged in this type of behavior are walking the streets, we continue to have issues. And so um, it might be a mother, it might be a girlfriend, or a friend that think that they're protecting somebody by not saying anything. And in protecting that person, they're endangering a whole community. And so I, I cannot overemphasize the importance of people um, just doing the right thing. Because, I mean, you may not pull the trigger, but if you know you're not saying anything, you might as well have. This would be a question for the investigators probably. Are the majority of the cases, were they gun related or were there other murder weapons used? Uh, I would, the majority of them were gun related. We did have several that were other weapons used, but the majority of our homicides in 2019 were gun related. Do we have any other questions from some of the other stations? All right, well thank you all for coming here today. If you have any further questions, let me know after the press conference. And just to reiterate, these were cases that occurred and were solved in 2019 only. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>